So in this session, we're going to talk about how to make sure that your website comes up uh, in the Google Maps or Google Places. So you might have seen recently, uh, probably over the last maybe six to 12 months, actually probably even a little bit longer than that now, um, you're starting to see the organic listings start to change uh, where Google started to do a thing they called universal search where they started to pull in, they tried images that didn't quite hang around, but they also pulled in uh, uh, videos as well, you're starting to see videos appear in the search and they also pulled in maps now as well. So you know when you do a search and typically they're tailoring it to more geographic uh, related searches. So I mean if you're looking for um, Dentist Melbourne, I'm just going to keep using that example, let's say you're using for that, um, the, the way that I, they figure is uh, what's going to be more relevant to you? Is it going to be a dentist that's located in Sydney or is it going to be a dentist that's located in Melbourne? Well, you just search for a Melbourne term, so obviously, geographically speaking, that's going to be more relevant. And then they also started to take in other bits of information. There's a thing called uh, an IP address, which is assigned to you when you're on the internet uh, and it gives an indication as to where you are. So that IP address, it's almost like a locator so they know roughly geographically where you are. So with that in mind, they can start to tailor the search results uh, to, to your location. So that way they'll start to serve more relevant information to you. So if you're looking for a pizza shop for dinner tonight um, and they could locate where you are, it's going to be much more relevant to find you the pizza shop that's closest to you. And that's why they started to put in Google Places and things like that and you'll see now when you search for terms you'll see maps and it's starting to embed into uh, the search engines. So there's like a, a good example here uh, and that's like our, our client for the uh, printing Melbourne and it is changing like somewhat, they keep on mixing it up, they're obviously still testing it, Google are uh, avid testers. Uh, you can see there on the right hand side they've got a map, sometimes that map is embedded into the actual content, uh, there is no real set way that they're doing it, it's bouncing around all the time. Uh, sometimes you'll find the Google Places listings and the way that you can tell that it's a Google Places listing as opposed to just a normal listing is you can see like, see the little A and the little B, that little pin just underneath the search result, that shows you that it's a Google Places listing. Sometimes it's more obvious uh, than other times as to whether or not it's Google Places. Now when this happened, you know, a lot of people, this is what I was saying as far as the search engine uh, optimization community, uh, they're all like, oh, you know, this is the end of the world, just like they're doing with the Panda update. Um, because what we're seeing now is it's, it's pushing down all of the organic results. So you might have spent, um, you know, a whole bunch of time trying to get your keywords ranking, number one, organically and coming up the top. And then they've just introduced Google Places and now they've just pushed everything down below the fold. So, you know, you need to scroll halfway down the page. And if you remember on that video that we watched at the start, Google versus Yellow Pages, we were kind of like, um, so how do you know which one to click on? Oh, usually I click on one and the, th the third. There was that crazy woman. Um, uh, why do you click on one and the third? And she's like, I don't know, I just do. Um, but the, the moral of the story being they don't scroll very far down the page. Uh, so this is uh, changing the way that things are working, particularly for geographic terms. So it's important that you get this right. And it's really quite simple. A lot of people just don't do it and it's you kind of you just need to jump in there and do it. It won't take you long. I'll show you the way that it's done uh, and I'll show you my listing as well. Um, I've logged into my account uh, to give you a little bit of an idea as to uh, what it looks like behind the scenes. So getting down to business, all you have to do is run a search for your business and uh, on, on Google Maps and then see if it comes up because Google Places actually they pull a lot of content or scrape content from uh, yellow pages and things like that. So a lot of businesses are listed in things like yellow pages, they're scraping the content and then they're appearing on Google Places. If your business is already there, it's best to claim a listing that's already there. So you might find that your business is already there, but you never actually created it. When that's the case, you just visit the listing and in the top right hand corner, it'll say claim this listing. Now, 
uh, at the end of this, uh, in fact, at the end of the slides, I've got a video that talk, actually talks through this in a little bit more detail. So if you want a little bit more of a hand-holding, um, won't cost you anything, just email through our support and I'll give you the URL for that and then you can get a video that can show you how to do that a little bit easier. But you just claim a listing. Um, you want to make sure that you use the email address uh, with your domain name, ideally. Like, I'm going to give you the best rules of thumb here. Um, so when you actually claim the listing, you need to give them an email address so give them one with you know Dave at Melbourne SEO services uh, make sure that you put your company name in there don't do any funny business don't try and load your keyword heavily in there like I mean if you want to rank uh, number one for I don't know chiropractor Melbourne um, don't make your business name chiropractor Melbourne unless your that is your business name Google's getting really smart about trying to spot people that are trying to game the system and just recently we we had uh, our at one of one of our our Google places page uh, got canned um, and and they're, they're just getting really smart on the way that things are doing. Like, I mean, things that used to work uh, aren't working like they were. Uh, they are constantly changing it. And it's really quite difficult to contact Google. They're just like this massive company that's so core to so many people's businesses, but you can't pick up the phone and call Google. If you try, you'll go through a few teleprompts and then they'll tell you, um, yeah, sorry, we don't offer that type of support. That goes for Google Places, that goes for YouTube. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating. I can probably understand why though. They'd probably get a ridiculous amount of inbound calls if they did offer that. But the moral of the story is follow, follow these rules of thumb. Make sure you use your company name, no funny business. Make sure that you use a real address. Later on, you can hide it. So it might be important um, for you to hide your address. Like, I mean, you might be a, a mobile windscreen repair person and you don't actually have an office, you go to them. Initially, list it with an address and then later on, you can hide it if you need to. Uh, then uh, you want to make sure that you use the categories. There's some categories that they give you. Just use one of their categories. So start typing what you think the category will be and then it'll auto populate for you uh, and just select one of the ones they give you. Um, plus you might try and put some keywords in. Again, try and avoid putting stuffing keywords in there. It's going to hurt you in the long run, so don't worry about doing that. And then load out as much info as you can. Put the hours, put photos, put um, all of your different contact information that you can. Um, do everything to fill it out. And then once you do that, you have to verify your listing. You select either by phone or by mail. Um, I'd select by phone just because the mail, we, we tried selecting by mail and then I think we waited three weeks and nothing came and then we had to reapply and then it was another three weeks before this little card comes out and they give you a little pin. Basically, you need to get this pin number to prove that uh, the, the phone number or the address is real. So they're just verifying you. That way you can't put up a listing for a business that you don't necessarily own or have control over. So um, select the phone, they'll call your mobile straight away uh, and they'll give you a five digit pin and you just enter it in and that's how you claim your listing. I'll show you mine on the inside. Just at the moment, we're working on ours uh, at the moment because we've just recently moved uh, address. So we've actually just set up a new places listing uh, so that's Gary, so Melbourne SEO Services. So you can see they're starting to integrate um, the places page even under your normal listings as well. And look what it's doing. Like, I mean, they're pulling in, this is from my Google Places, those images and stuff like that. That product looks familiar, doesn't it? Um, then there's photos of like, I mean, positioning for me uh, for, from speaking at, uh, on stage at a few different things. But I mean, from a listing point of view, how authoritative does that look? And then look under the one underneath it. Like, I mean, that just owns. Let's, um, so let's just log in and have a little bit of a look. So when you actually click on the Google Places page, this is what it looks like. Um, so I've got a little bit of info here with some photos. We've got um, some videos as well. You can embed YouTube videos into that. Uh, and like I said, this is a new listing. Uh, so you want to make sure that you start improving your, uh, you can get ratings and reviews and things like that. So you want to encourage people to write reviews. Don't, again, don't uh, try and be dodgy with that. Um, they log IP addresses, so I mean, if they just get a submission of 20 different reviews saying how awesome your business is, uh, it's going to look a little bit dodgy. Uh, and also, like I mean, it's it's natural to sometimes have some bad reviews. Like I mean, if it all looked absolutely perfect, for any, that'd end up being a warning sign for me, because I mean, not every you're never going to please everybody. So 
Um, uh, that's, that's something to keep in mind as well. So let's actually jump in and have a look at the Google Places page. So I've logged in. So when you're actually looking at it, see up on the right hand side here, mine's owner verified. And I can edit this places listing because I'm logged into my account. Uh, that's where if it was a um, just a scraped uh, listing from yellow pages, you could uh, it's not it wouldn't be owner verified. So you could click it and then you'd owner verified by entering in your details and then they'd send you that pin. So on the inside, this is what it looks like. Um, you just select your country, your address, um, all your relevant info. You get to write a little uh, description. Again, don't go too heavy on trying to spam in keywords. Make sure you have call to actions. Think it but like I mean, I've got here, call us now and we'll get you up and running. So think call to actions. Um, the categories I've got here, internet marketing, video production, so that's fine. Service areas, we service anyone. My operating hours, um, down here we selected the payment options, filled out all of the photos and videos. Keep scrolling down, there's the videos actually. Scrolling down uh, and we're just, we're just starting to do some tests on this. There's um, some other little sneak, this is probably about the only place that you can put keywords in. So we're actually doing some tests at the moment uh, with another client where we're putting the keyword in here and then some links through to your website, but we're, that's still in uh, testing mode at the moment. Um, so that's pretty much what you do to fill it out. Uh, and then once you fill it out, I'll tell you what the secret source is. Uh, so how do you actually, once you fill everything out, how do you make sure that your places comes up? Uh, you need to firstly make sure that um, th this is what Google takes into account when it's deciding what to serve up. You need to, it'll think about the address, like I mean obviously where is the person searching from an IP perspective as well so they know where you're located, plus they'll also know based on the keyword as well. Um, they'll also have a look at the services area. So. When, when I was like in uh, my Google Places account, you said I said I had no services area. Um, I, I'll serve anyone because our business isn't uh, space specific. Like we can serve anyone. Um, the other thing as well, um, people talk about updating content as well. Like I mean, Google is about serving fresh, relevant content, so it's always a good idea to hop in and just keep an eye on your Google Places account. You can add in coupons as well. Um, jury's out as to whether or not that actually affects the rankings or not, but you can offer discounts to people who come to your Places page. Uh, in fact, having a look at ours, I'll show you what one looks like. So here, 15% off all self-study courses. Um, and I've set an expiry date, so we just do like a little coupon there. If they show that, then they can get a discount uh, on our products and services. Um, getting reviews, again, encourage your clients to give uh, you reviews, that's important. And then the final one, and this is the holy grail when it comes to Google Places, and uh, no one is doing this uh, nearly as well as they probably could or should. Uh, and uh, partly is people just don't know about it yet, but the, the when, when you think about SEO and ranking websites, it's all about links. So I talked about on-page and off-page. 80% uh, of SEO is all about those links getting back to your website. The equivalent of links in um, uh, in Google Places is called citations. So all citations are, uh, are uh, um, showing your website's contact details, so your name, your address, your phone number, exactly as it's listed on your website, exactly as it's listed in your Google Places account, uh, having that info listed on other websites. So, and when you make references like that, Google keeps on going, oh, yep, this is important, oh, yep, this is important. The more citations you get, uh, they're kind of like the backlinks of uh, Google Places. So I'll show you how to know where to get those backlinks. So this is a tool that we use um, and I've got the little link there. It's um, uh, whitespark.ca uh, and it's just a service. Costs. Uh, uh, I can give you the uh, URL uh, later if you want to copy it down but it's just uh, a tool that makes you, you can reverse engineer what your competition's doing. So I've just logged into my account here and I've gone into, uh, I ran a search for uh, one of our clients for the dentists. And uh, you can see here, when, when you run your search, I'll set it to Australia and I searched for Dentist Melbourne. So what I can see here is I can see who uh, are in the top seven. So they have, they call it the seven pack. Basically that's the, they list seven businesses mainly on, on the front page for Google Places. So 
having a look here, we can see what the citations are just here. So this is what our competition is doing. Uh, and then uh, we can view their citation sources. So basically, it's just a matter of where are they getting their citations. We go get the citation, and that's how we move up the rankings. Um, so if you have a look here as well, it does some analysis, and it goes, of the people who are listed in Google Places, um, which uh, properties occur most frequently? So for, yellow pa for um, Dentist Melbourne, uh, 30, there are 39 occurrences of the businesses listed on Google Places also have a listing in truelocal.com.au. So that means it's important for you to have your business listed in True Local uh, because that's one of the real major core citations where it's consistent across the board for all of them. So that's, that's like, I mean, that's right there, the, the, uh, the secret source. So, um, the action plan from here, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, claim your listing. Uh, very easy to do. Uh, I think I was talking to Sam during the break just previously, weren't you saying, oh, someone, someone had commented how little people have actually claimed their, no, some, someone had said, does anyone, oh, there we go. Um, it's like 2% or something like that of businesses have actually gone ahead and claimed their Google Places. It's so brain dead simple to do, so you might as well do it. Um, and I showed you exactly how to do that. Uh, you want to encourage reviews, build those citations, and if you want uh, another video or if you want help actually doing it uh, if you're in a competitive space then obviously check out Melbourne SEO services but if you want that video as well just email us go through to Melbourne SEO services um, website check out the contact us and just say you know I was watching the uh, competition crusher workshop and I wanted to get a copy of that video that you referenced and I can sort of go through in a little bit more detail how to make sure that you optimize that listing uh, so that is a wrap at the end. Might see if there are any uh, final questions just before lunch. Yep. So we'll just take a minute. Right. Like with your web-based companies, David, like Planet 13, is it? Yep. Do you still use a place page? Yeah. So for the, uh, it's, it's not so relevant for businesses that don't have a, a physical address. Uh, for us, like I mean, for Planet 13, we actually still have the place, but we, we had a couple of retail stores, even though they've closed down. I don't know if we should probably have a look. I don't think we've gone in and uh, taken it down since then. Um, I like I would, if you can, like I mean, all business has got to have some residence, so you might as well put your own home residence or something like that, because um, I mean, it's just another chance, another bite at the cherry. I don't, it's not make or break. There's so many other different ways to build. Um, or, or, or to make sure that we're appearing in the search engines. Like, we'll have a look at video, we had a look at organic, we've had a look at places. If you can, I would, but uh, yeah, I suppose it depends whether or not you want to list your website or not, or your home address. Cool. All right, let's have some lunch. Thank you. Thank you.